someone, someone asked for it, so it's here. The Lego Technic Unimog, set number 8110. But first, smash that like button if you want to see how my new set layout is set up. So, let's start with the toilet set in its box. The box has a Lego feel to it, which is nice. With the Lego logo in the top left, Technic logo next to that, and set details. These will be on screen if you want to read them. And then you have a massive image of the Unimog in orange. On the right, there is a banner to do with power functions and pneumatics. Both of which I'll go on to later. If you lift up the front, you can find two large images of the Unimog demonstrating its features. On the side, there's the Lego logo multiple times. And on the back, there is an image of the second build, which is a snowplow. I probably won't give a review of the B model, but I might give my thoughts on it at the end. What it doesn't sell the box is the price. Because Lego doesn't sell this set anymore, the best place to buy one is Amazon. And what does that say? £250, really? Part of the reason for the price is the premium of getting a new set after Lego has stopped producing it. The other is the sheer number of parts of which it is made up of. The set is built in four segments, across five instruction manuals. If you build almost non-stop, 9am to 5pm, and you are good at building a Lego Technic, this should take about one to two days to build. Be careful while building, the instructions are clear, but it is easy to make a mistake, if you're not careful. The easiest part to make a mistake on is the gearbox, because the gears have to be a certain way round. So it works. So now for a tour of the model, starting at the cab. Inside are the seats, which are blue, and the steering wheel and some gauges. On the outside, there are the black wing mirrors, and there are loads of stickers giving details of the door handle and branding, but the doors don't open. Around the front, there is a grill and the Mercedes-Benz logo. This is a sticker and it's obvious we're looking at my example because it isn't straight. But this can be printed, but stickers are part of the fun. The front is also made out of standard Lego, not Technic. The back and the roof are not particularly detailed, but a little detail is needed to make it realistic. The roof is flat and on the back there are two yellow lights. In the middle there is a gear which turns the front wheels. On the back there is an exhaust and air intake. The front part of the main body has an attachment point. The A model uses this to attach the winch to the front and the B model uses it to attach the snow plough. Either side of the attachment points there are headlights. Round the headlights using stickers are red and white warning stripes. Going down the left side of the body there are the steering wheels, the main control functions and going further back there are the other wheels and the side of the box on the back. The back of the Unibog has an air tube for the pneumatics and the other attack point, the A model uses it to attach the crane slash grabber arm and the B model doesn't use it. Along the right side there are the other wheels and the other side of the box on the back. On to functions. The Lego Technic line is known for being functional and the Unimog is no exception with power functions included. A rarity in more recent sets like the 24 hour race car I reviewed here. And pneumatics, which is even more of a rarity in Technic, and power functions. It has a battery box that takes six AA batteries that are not included. On terms of components, you get a medium motor through power, through power of which it does the winch, the crane rotation, and the pneumatics. All of them all the pneumatics are built into the crane in the A model and the snow plough in the B model. Included in the pneumatics are the pump, four selectors, two large pistons, a small piston, and various lengths of piping in blue, grey and black. To switch functions, use the selector switches on the left side. The gearbox they connect to though is on the right hand side, behind this panelling. The yellow selector changes between the motor and the pneumatic pump. The rest selectors changes between sending it to the front or the back. As I mentioned earlier, there are four pneumatic switches. The first can be found next to the battery box, decides which way the air 
goes in the truck. If the switch is facing forward, the air goes to the front for the snowplow if it is built. If, the, if, it's, if it's switching backwards, it goes to the back. Three switch, the next three switches are next to the crane pl dip, slash plow, depending on what configuration you have built. The crane is set up so the switch closest to the front controls the low piston. The one in the middle does this piston. And the one at the very back does the grabber arm. The set has other tricks up its sleeve too. For example, it's got Lego's largest shock absorbers. They can really take a beating. The cab also has other tricks. For example, the cab can lean forwards. And there's a straight four engine connected to the wheels by a series of differentials in the middle, the front, and the back. On the back of the crane part, there are two outriggers. This means that the weight isn't all on the suspension when lifting heavier objects. The wheels on the Unimog are some of the largest LEGO wheels I have seen. Next to wheels from other LEGO sets, the wheels are dwarfed. Testing what this truck can do would be hard because the grabber doesn't grip soft, smooth sided objects. The winch is obviously easier to demonstrate. Now I'll give my thoughts on the B model from the pictures on the internet and on the box. to the A model, which means it will have most of the same problems, like the gearbox. I decided not to build it though, because the functions are not as good. With a grabber you can pick up all kinds of things, but a plough doesn't really do anything. If the most uh, powered the wheels as well, I may consider building it. It looks good, but it isn't functional. But, you may like the look of it more. Looking also on the back of the box, you can see what it does. It can be lifted up and down, and it can be turned side to side. But is the A model worth the £250 that Amazon sell it for? Good question. That depends on the person who will own it. If you like a challenge and like cars, it's well worth the cost, and you the finish in once you've finished, it feels amazing. But it's not for someone that's only ever built one or two small to medium technic sets. It'd be difficult and frustrating to build. Thanks for watching this video. Why not check out my last video? Also, why not get subscribed and follow me on Instagram and Twitter for extras and behind the scenes content.